Hi, welcome back. Uh, no, we haven't turned into a gardening channel. It's just the biggest tip of the day. Don't tell your wife that uh, you got a couple of weeks off from the car. Otherwise you'll get lumbered with a few little projects. Anyway, let's crack on. So here we are back in the garage. Uh, now I'm just do, gonna do a, a quick fire rattle round of uh, all the kit I've got. Uh, hopefully give you some tips and tricks. Um, show you what I've uh, got to uh, build a couple of uh, successful kit cars and uh, what, what I think you should have, uh, what would be nice to have, and you know, maybe what you can get away with, uh, tips and tricks and maybe some prices. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to tell you is I do have a, uh, a wider than standard uh, single garage and it would be particularly nice without all my shelving units. Uh, however, with the shelving units, uh, my usable space is 15 and a half feet by nine feet. Um, that gives me enough space to be able to get around the car, to crouch down, get wheels on and off, slide around underneath the car, etc. Um, without any hassle at all. Uh, you know, I do have a few things uh, hung up on the wall and there might be an occasion I just catch my back on a, on a ladder that you might be able to see over my shoulder or, or something, but uh, nothing crazy. Um, so uh, I do have a little bit of extra space and let me show you where I've measured up to. All right, so I only measured up to these pipes here. Obviously without these pipes, you know, I could get another couple of inches, but uh, I've taken that into account as well, just to be completely fair. Uh, my wife's bike stays here all the time. That doesn't impact at all. I guess the nose of the car uh, uh, um, go, goes, in, goes in slightly. I have loads of room there uh, where the car ends up being uh, to get uh, wheels totally on and off and work on it. Absolutely no problem at all. Did all my painting of uh, the wheel arches and everything. Uh, so uh, I do wheel my uh, kids bikes out or they go on the far corners um, uh, over there and they don't impact at all. Uh, it does wind me up, they do, do get pushed back uh, a lot further um, and it does wind me up that I catch uh, the rubber handle uh, every time I go past. But you know it's it's pretty good so i just measured up to um not even to the threshold obviously sometimes uh, in the winter in the, in the door shut so i measured from about here uh, into the into the garage and uh left to, left and right um from the sort of brooms um all the way to the wellies so uh, so that's the kind of space uh, i think i could probably do it in a slightly tighter space um, it'd be nice, uh, I guess, if that was the case, um, you might want to be wheeling it out uh, onto a driveway or something uh, to, do, to do some of the tighter work or get exhaust on and off. But um, on the whole, very pleased with the space I have got. Um, so let's move on to the next thing. So like I said, I'm just going to rattle around and uh, see what we come across. So the first thing is uh, plenty of blue cloth uh, paper toweling. Uh, nice, easy to get hold of and to rip straight off do something, get something mounted up on the wall. You do not want to be messing around when you've got uh, greasy hands. Uh, next thing is my uh, 12 ton hydraulic press. Uh, well overrated uh, this, uh, in that I could probably have got away with a five or six ton at half the price. So this one was about 140 pounds from eBay. It's a pretty heavy bit of kit and you just assemble it yourself. Uh, so the, the six ton is around uh, 80 pounds, I think. This is this is dead handy, okay? Uh, it saves me having to go to a local welders or something. Uh, if you just need to tweak, and I'll just show you what I've got uh, here just to give you a, an idea of what we do. I've got some old wheel bearings here just to give me a nice curve if I wanna be pressing some metal down. And here is a prime example. If you just need to tweak just a couple of mil, um, the exhaust brackets just so they uh, get closer to the chassis or something, uh, this is what I do. So I put it in between there. I've got a, a nice um, uh, socket uh, set here of the, of the desired curve, if you like. And I just uh, press that down and uh, just to in introduce a, a slightly more, more of a bend, or perhaps you want to straighten it. So I just uh, put it crossways uh, onto, onto the met metal blocks here and uh, you can flatten it out slightly, depending on what you need. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think that's a nice to have for 80 pounds. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a real win, I think. Now, something you may want to think about, I've got uh, the engine crane here. You know, it gets used like once a year. Again, oh, what was that? About, about another 120 quid, another couple of heavy uh, packages arriving, poor DHL. Um, 
I don't know, if you if you know for sure that you're going to be able to get your engine in in a day, then probably hire in makes sense and, and no need to buy one. Uh, and especially if you're only going to be going to, going to do one car, right? So uh, I, I plan to do a couple of cars. It's kind of my hobby. Uh, and uh, with a family garage with scooters and pogo sticks knocking around, I found that I can't really keep them. Um, as much as I try and keep the cars, I'm just scared to death. As soon as it comes back from paint, you realise uh, kind of how much money you've got sitting in the garage. And um, I'd hate anything to be falling on it. So um, I'll probably uh, do another another car after this. So it makes sense for me to have the engine uh, crane here. Like I said, hardly ever get used. I guess I could store it outside or in some sort of container, wrap it up with a sheet and stuff, keep it oiled. But um, there it goes, it seems to fit in quite nicely there. Uh, you'll need a torque wrench for those more important uh, bolts. Um, you need to get one that goes fairly high up but also a smaller one that does the, uh, the, the, the lower torques as well. Uh, so this is good. Uh, I think they still need checking every couple of years as well, so bear that in mind. This has seen a great deal of use. Uh, so this large one only goes down to um, about 45 foot-pounds, so you need a smaller one as well. Uh, new for this build are my quick jacks. You know, you don't really need these. Um, my my low-profile uh, trolley jack... Uh, did admirably last year. Make sure you get a low profile one that gets really un uh, under the lower yeah, parts of the car. Um, but I did find I was I was jacking things up an, an awful lot. Um, primarily towards the end, end of the build when you having to go under, double check things, get, do that last little bit of wire into the fuel pump or something like that. Um, so uh, in this build, I had it up on the quick jacks for the majority of the months that I was building it and only lowered it a couple of times, which made me double think if I actually needed these. But um, I think when the car comes back and you, 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 you double check and everything and you just want to get it up and down quickly, it, it does make a lot of sense um, because with a trolley jack, you're jacking up the back, then you're chocking it up and then you're going to the front and jacking that up and you're just sweating your backside off and uh, this this just makes it so easy and even just to save me a couple of times using the trolley jack I think these have been well worth it. Now you have to be careful uh, make sure you do the measuring yourself if you get some uh, I think these are about 850-900 or so pounds um, and they're the small ones and they only just fit in between the t uh, the wheels uh, um, of, uh, of the co AK Cobra uh, so if you've got the longer ones, um, I don't think you're going to be able to use them because uh, they're right. Unless you push them to more into the middle of the car, I guess. Uh, so it's not within the wheels, um, then, uh, then then you might be all right. But of course, you know, I wanted the, uh, the jacks as far out as possible. Now, um, even with these jacks, uh, you have to use um, some rubber blocks. Um, which uh, which you get a stack, a stack of um, because the car is not flat underneath. Uh, well, it is flat, but there's two levels. So um, I think the front is uh, is slightly lower than the back, uh, the tray uh, where, where the sort of passenger and uh, driver sits, where their feet go is slightly lower. So there's two size blocks and I usually use these lower ones on the front and uh, a, a thicker one at the back and that uh, seems to come up dead in line and A-OK. -okay. Uh, I am a little bit concerned that uh, the pressures, I, I, I do put two of the small ones on the front and two of the big ones on the back. Um, I was just uh, maybe a little bit concerned with how it spreads the weight and a couple of times um, I have put a, a piece of wood uh, span in and making a larger sort of surface area for it to, to push up on but actually I think it, I think it's absolutely fine so these are good now to get these working these use 12 volt I think um, so uh, so you have to so you have to find a, a power source so I wanted to be really sneaky and use one of those small battery jump packs uh, that you'd use in a car however they have a bit of circuitry in those jump packs that won't allow it to work unless it senses a whole circuit which it can't do when it's plugged into this 
So I did try a couple in case I had a faulty one and I just couldn't get it to work. And it would have been handy because it's such a small pack and you could charge it and you could just zip tie it to the side here and it's quite a nice unit and you would have just been able to carry it around. Uh, so instead, I got this 50 pound jump starter unit uh, from Halford and it basically does the same thing. Uh, there's, the, there's the jump uh, crocodile clips and, uh, and it works absolutely fine. Plus, I guess it's got the benefit of a light USB and a cigarette socket on the front in case you need to do anything else. So in actual fact, it is dead handy. And um, yeah, I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been pretty chuffed uh, with these. Um, so do I recommend them? Yeah, I recommend them, but uh, a real unnecessary luxury, I think. Uh, it's quite good. These ones aren't uh, joined in the middle, like uh, quite a few of them are, are fixed in, in the middle, but these are handy that you can uh, unplug dead quick. They've got wheels on. Uh, they are heavy, but you can just wheel them out and I can start doing some work in, in the driveway if required. So they are quite uh, manoeuvrable and uh, you can even stand them up uh, against the side of your garage if you don't need them. I plan, uh, I just push them in a little bit and uh, the car rolls right over. A little bit low on the front, as you might have seen on one of the videos, I left a rubber block there and it just caught on the front. But without the rubber block, then the profile is well low enough. So that's the quick jacks. So you will have to excuse the state of the garage. <laughs> you know, space is at a premium and I use all of it. Uh, next up is uh, the um, jack stands. You've got to have these, even with the, um, the quick jacks. Um, uh, extra safety, so even when it's up on the quick jacks, I still put a, a jack stand underneath and, uh, and uh, I think that's uh, absolutely essential to put them around. I've got uh, four or six of those, um, even though these do have a kind of locking lock uh, unit on, on the side, uh, quite heavy duty. It locks um, at that halfway up position and also at the back as it rises. Uh, always stick a jack stand underneath. Along with the jack stands, um, I've also got uh, some ramps, some metal ramps. So I've got some extensions there and the full uh, uh, metal ramps just underneath here so uh, so I could drive up on them if I like to uh, to save me jacking once uh, once you've got the motor started and it work and it, the car can be driven uh, by the way I do have a couple of uh, e36 steering columns uh, for sale if anyone wanted to can contact me or look at them on my website uh, russhowell.com uh, on to some products that I use uh, so Definitely worth big tub, multi-purpose grease, copperies, and the high-performance bearing grease. Uh, a couple of other things I used: touch up the chassis or, or something, smooth hammerite metal paint, uh, Eastwood radiator black that I used for the uh, coat in the front of the radiator. Um, bit of very high temperature paint for anywhere close to the exhausts, etc. And again, this is what I used on anywhere near the exhaust, some poor 15 high temp paint. Uh, some etch primer. And this nylon lubricant was excellent to put underneath the windscreen, the rubber of the windscreen, to allow you to push that into position a lot more easily. And that's, uh, that's about the necessary things from there. Now, I guess it just comes with time and, uh, and, and doing kit cars, but of course you uh, gather a lot of spares, etc. Uh, I'm very grateful for gathering the spares. Uh, it might be worth your while purchasing. Uh, so we've got um, some conduit here for uh, some split conduit to, get, to put over cables, uh, quite thin. I think this might be about uh, six or seven mil. And then we go right out to uh, uh, 10 mil, I think. And then we've got some edge trim of different varieties and it's really handy to uh, to have all of this that you can just reach into and uh, and make use of without having to wait for a delivery so uh, I plan to stock up on more edge trim and uh, make sure I've got enough uh, greases and my fiberglass paint is ready to go uh, ready for the next build because that was the main 
The main uh, reason that this build went so, so quickly that I already had gear and accessories and a lot of stock ordered. Uh, I will actually be making my eBay list available uh, of all my purchases and everything I got from uh, Merlin Motorsports and Car Builder Solutions and anywhere else. Uh, this really helped. I mean, for this build, I literally got my eBay purchase list from the last car and pretty much ordered everything. I made a few mistakes in the, in the last one, ordered some uh, some wrong things, but um, yeah, uh, I just went through it and I got everything before even the car had arrived. Uh, and this helped no end. You're not waiting for three days for something to arrive from eBay or you know a week or something to, to arrive from waiting for a courier to arrive. And that is the one thing that enabled me to build a car in about five months or so. Obviously it's gone to paint now, the months will, will trickle on, but um, I haven't given it any less thought or used any less skill. Um, I've given it some my real time and dedication and done the job to the best of my ability. And it's simply the ordering of the gear that has made it faster. So, uh, so yeah, uh, you might make use of, of that. You might uh, be doing things your own way, using totally different products, absolutely fine, but it might just give you a little idea. So I will make that available uh, on the website or uh, in a future video. Okay, like I said, I'll be covering absolutely everything, uh, I think, hopefully. Um, get yourself a kneeling mat. If you're as old as me, then uh, you need to be kneeling on something. These cold garage floors are horrible after a while, and they usually got uh, shards of metal or, or uh, fiberglass all over them as well. Um, also, good idea to paint your garage floor to stop all the dust uh, from the concrete or whatever else you've got uh, uh, on the floor, or maybe even just so it shows up um, you know, your dropped items uh, a bit more clearly. So highly recommend uh, doing the floor, which I need to redo. Okay, uh, so what else have we got here? Um, so I've got a few tools. Um, I've, got a, I've got a grinder here. I've got a uh, old tool chest of uh, duff drill bits, etc. just in case I just need to hack away at something. Um, and then we go up to my tool chest. Uh, so this is the Halfords Advance. They often do a deal on this and it's about 50 or 70 pounds less. I think this was about 90 pounds. So fantastic, you know, soft clothes and uh, all the good stuff. So that's really handy. And this is another reason that um, uh, it's quite quick to build a car. If you've got a smaller garage, I would love to have a huge garage with loads of snap-ons and everything and loads of room to, uh, to whistle about um, on, a little, uh, on a little wheeled um, stool or something. But you know what? You have to take those few extra steps and it's just so handy to actually have things uh, close by, whether you're just reaching for a bit of, a, a bit of masking tape or, or something or, or, or a file which you need repeatedly. So a whole range of files in here and uh, it is quite handy that you've got <laughs> everything close. Uh, so onto the files. Um, yeah, large file, small files. Um, these these smaller files, uh, so not quite as flimsy as maybe a jeweler's file, um, but uh, really, really handy. So I highly recommend uh, getting some of these. I think this was a little five pack from Toolzone. Uh, so it has a, has a more meaty round uh, file, which is extremely essential, and uh, lots of other shapes, half crescents and, uh, and things like that. So yeah, get yourself some files. Uh, we got a one-man brake and clutch bleeding tool. Seems to work all right once you stop it, stop it leaking and get a good seal uh, on the actual uh, brake nipple, etc. Uh, so this is this is really good. Top pipes are a little bit stiff and it can knock the bottle over that it's stuck in unless you've really wedged it. But all pretty good. Uh, uh, snap ring uh, plier set really good for getting those. Um, uh, snap rings out and putting them back in again. This isn't the best quality, but um, it just about holds together and does the job. Now, uh, in the last build, I used um, hand riveter uh, quite a lot. In this one, I've only used a riveter, 
to put on the kind of VIN plate that you get, the aluminium VIN plate that you get from AK uh, with a chassis number and uh, engine number on it. So uh, good enough. Uh, it comes with a few different size heads so you can get those really small rivets um, and all the way up to about 4.8 mil. So you know you don't need it a lot so don't waste a lot of money on it. Um, now, digital multimeter, that could help you solve a few problems if you've got a couple of little wiring gremlins. So uh, I would say that's essential. They're so cheap, you might as well. And after that, yeah, rolls of masking tape because there's an awful lot of wiring in, to do in the car. As well as the, um, this, uh, the, the papery sort of uh, masking tape as well. Excellent for just sticking over making a hole and uh, starting to drill onto your fiberglass. Make, uh, if you drill into fiberglass, put it into reverse for a little bit first and then uh, go into forward and it shouldn't chip your fiberglass. Okay, on to the next thing. All right, so we'll just rattle through these drawers now. Uh, so I've got a deep set uh, socket set here. This is really handy for those longer bolts uh, and also for giving you a bit of extra reach. So I do recommend a longer set. However, um, when you're undoing some things with such a long socket on there, you can find um, it wobbling off a little bit or you can't really get a firm enough grip on it because it's, uh, it's starting to sort of pull away off, off, off the nut. So as well as a long, deep socket set, you should also get a, a short uh, socket set as well to give you a firmer uh, lock onto the nuts, etc. Uh, as well as that, I've got uh, smaller sets here. Uh, 10 mil and 13 mil is used an awful lot. So, uh, so yeah, I do recommend that. Um, next up, another socket set and I've uh, got a few mold grips and for all your wiring and and stuff you need to uh, you need to have uh, some some pliers and thin nose pliers so it's all pretty standard hopefully, hopefully you've got that get yourself a metric uh, spanner set nothing crazy maybe I'd like to get some ratchet spanners uh, one day but uh, but we, we do all right a couple of uh, adjustables and on this side I've got um, non-metric, whatever that is called, just for those odd sizes. Just a few hand-me-downs really. Again, uh, so we've got some, uh, some flat edge screwdrivers here and then some Phillips uh, on, on this side, whole range. I'm sure you've collected more than I have over the years. Ah, awesome, crimping tool. There is a surprising amount of crimps, uh, you know, on the um, on the wiring harness. So get yourself a decent crimper tool that you like uh, like using, and it'll make your life a real pleasure. Uh, stripping tool as well, wire stripping tool. Nothing else here is really essential. Um, we'll get into heat shrink as well in a second. I've got a couple of bits just to speed things up. I've uh, got some hex uh, bits here for my. Uh, for my driver and uh, just a few other bits and pieces, but and none of that is really essential. And at the top, uh, <clears throat> Allen key set. My God, you'll be needing this a lot. Uh, <laughs> only a couple of sizes, actually. You need a couple of sizes down here. Uh, if you're putting any uh, button headed uh, um, bolts into the chassis, doing your brake lines, etc. But even for putting on the spinners onto the wheels, you need uh, uh, two sizes so um so yeah uh use them and uh what else have i got here scissors and stanley's and get plenty of blades because you'll be blunting them uh no end even if it's just cutting cardboard to kneel on or lie on so uh, definitely essential and then here i'll show you my tap and die set but i've got some spares taps and dies five mil six mil uh, whatever usually uh, snaps or you ran out of. So I've shown you my tap and die set before. Uh, I really like this one. Gear wrench, 40 pieces. Um, yeah, of course the occasional one snaps. This is not the original, I don't think. Um, but uh, but that happens. But uh, it's, a, it's a great set. And it's got your little um, conversion chart here so you know what you're doing and what holes you need. 
And I've got to say, I don't think I've ever had to redo any threads before. I've only really had to cut cut threads um, for for bolts. So I've not really used any any of these. But uh, but you know, there may be uh, an opportunity to use those just to clean up um, a bolt or something that you might have cut shorter. So I recommend those and would say it's essential for your garage. This is a good one, wireless speaker. When your hands are greasy, you don't want to be pressing anything, you just want to shout at the thing. Uh, so uh, I do recommend a uh, hands-free speaker of some sort and uh, I think the Sonos system is, is excellent. So do some of that. Okay, so I seem to have got into the DeWalt ecosystem here. I think any manufacturer uh, are pretty good. As these start fading out, I might start going Milwaukee. Uh, I certainly uh, might need to be buying a Milwaukee Riveter um, because there's a chance that in the future I might do the AK40 um, replica car and that has an awful lot of rivets in it. So I'd want some kind of motorized version of that instead of the hand tool. But anyway, DeWalt have not let me down. Um, and uh, you know all the batteries are interchangeable and um, what have I got here uh, impact gun excellent you know does things up really tight and undoes tight things uh, that that was really handy especially when I was doing uh, stripping down an MX-5 that was rusted to, to heck so this is this is excellent um, standard drill just replaced my old one with a large battery this is a much lighter one it doesn't seem to stand as uh, it can't quite do things up as tightly before it starts uh, sort of ratcheting round um, but uh, it's still uh, an excellent excellent tool and by far my favorite one is this multi-tool my god all my cutouts in uh, in the fiberglass have been with this um, just get yourself a few blades and uh, it, you know you just rest your hand or or while, whilst it's vibrating you can just rest your fingers uh, uh, you know against against the bodywork and you can really carefully uh, do those cutouts for the exhaust and handbrake uh, sorry the uh, gear lever etc and uh, uh, this is very highly rated I, I would use this everywhere I can it's terrific it does have a vacuum system I can put on an attachment and attach it to the vacuum which makes it a little bit more cumbersome to use but it's essential for cutting out fiberglass especially if you're just in a, a fairly easy one space like doing the uh, exhaust cutouts so this is uh, this is amazing highly recommended and definitely worth getting okay a bit of a jumping around between accessories and tools uh, but i think it's essential to have a good supply of, uh, of parts so you're not waiting or having to drive and uh, interrupt your build so good selection of washers uh, i did read the instructions first to make sure i had enough washers uh, a lot come come with the build and uh, you can you can top up um, with a few more um, then we uh, i've got a lot of uh, hex heads, button heads, um, used M5 an awful lot for my pipe runs, uh, 20 mil and uh, upwards uh, 30 mil as well. Used some M6 for some heavier jobs. A uh, load of um, nuts here, nylocks, and a load of bolts and uh, extra nuts here. And then we also got a lot of uh, P clips, uh, essential. Uh, I think I used some maybe 17 mil for uh, uh, fuel pipes etc you can get two types you get these ones with a kind of long tail here and you can get ones with a shorter tail here i seem to prefer the ones with a slightly longer tail here and uh, of course remember you can double up and uh, get use one bolt for two p clips etc so that's uh, dead handy get a load of those as well as uh, jubilee clips i've actually been shying away from jubilee clips i find if you do them up too tight uh, this can flatten and slip and then no matter what you do you, you can't tighten them anymore uh, so i've been using michelor a bit more or even uh, just swapping out um, uh, some clips with uh, with, with uh, these these nut and bolt type and you can get them in all sizes uh, let me see if I can show you so a smaller size here with a nut and bolt and that's not going to slip you can do it up as tight as you want so um, read the instructions get some of those uh, you can see here that's um, I've even got this uh, uh, clamp here for uh, holding on the bottom um, water pipe as well so I uh, highly recommend getting some stock uh, jump on eBay 
there's an awful lot of terminations on the uh, on the uh, wiring loom. So get a pack of these. It's like seven or eight pounds. Has everything you need uh, for ter terminating all of your wires, as well as um, selection of heat shrink. About four pounds on eBay, and then of course uh, there's also uh, assortment of grommets. And I used some rubber washers as well on my pipe brake lines uh, where the bolts went into the chassis. All my small ones have gone uh, to stop some water, water ingress on every single bolt hole. And then you need uh, a good selection of these ring terminals as well. Uh, you need some massive ones for uh, your uh, battery earth, etc. So a good selection of ring terminals that you can crimp and uh, put some solder into. I'm just going to rattle through some bits that I've got. You don't need all of these, but uh, you know it's just what I've collected. This will be on my um, eBay list. This is a one-way valve for your uh, brake servo. Uh, this is the wrong diameter. I think I needed 10, 10 mil, and then this 12 mil uh, was uh, was too big. So um, one-way valve, uh, brake separator. Uh, sorry pipe separator, I uh, use that on my power steering pipes just to keep them running nicely parallel with each with each other. And um, more terminals and some uh, larger grommets here. Got some rivet nuts ready to go. Uh, you can get stainless steel and aluminium ones, so have a little practice. Uh, got some, for the engine bay end, got some nice uh, pipe finishes here. Again, I think you need about 17 mil, or there's two sizes of 15 as well. Uh, stain, get a nice shiny stainless steel black, or this kind of smoked effect. So that's good. Uh, lots of spring washers and uh, and uh, these locking kind of washers. So all get handy. Uh, loads of uh, split pins and things. Look at the instructions and get yourself your uh, pipe uh, terminations as well. All kind of uh, 10 mil metric, I believe, uh, apart from your uh, clutch line. So uh, you need a few of those and some T junctions, etc. Uh, more of those. And let's see what we got. A little shims of rubber. Uh, these were excellent uh, for joining joining wires. Uh, they they heat shrink around the wire and also the um, they, they melt in the middle of solder. The solder melts in the middle and joins the wires nice and solidly. So I highly recommend a pack of those in different sizes. Uh, not so much call cool for um, covers for your bolt, uh, nuts on this build because everything's pretty well hidden. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think I've got a couple of uh, joiners here um, for my heating pipes. So uh, that was handy from some previous builds and I'm a big fan of collecting odd angles of metal stuff that's been bent uh, a bit more nicely than, than something I can achieve so this is really handy just for putting uh, putting a little bracket on, on, on your engine to hold some wires uh, out, out of the way or um, or something underneath the dash so I'm always collecting little angles uh, uh, so I don't have to attempt to make something and that's that Okay, let's rattle through these. Um, a few bits of uh, trim, always handy, just for chucking uh, over over a short length of wire or something, just so you, that you show Mr. IVA man that you care that nothing gets chafed or cut through. Get yourself a couple of stickers, um, probably about a uh, pound 50. Uh, you need to put one of these near the brake reservoir. Um, got my nice wheel nuts, some spare, some spare. Um, spacers and stuff for doing the rear drive shafts against the diff uh, it sh you should with your with your diff you should get a few spacers uh, and all you need but I uh, just got a couple of extra anyway that you collect over time um, I've got some used nylocks here I use the used nylocks for adjusting my uh, rear drive shafts and then when I've adjusted them correctly I put my actual brand new nylocks on so they only get one use uh, okay, so these are from Woolies, uh, where you get also some some nice uh, screws. Uh, but these are for you used for holding your door card onto the actual door. So uh, 
they're handy to get. I've got a few terminals here that I use for my um, dashboard and some rubbish. Uh, here we go. Get these from Willie's as well. Really nice, kind of polished. Uh, get a couple of different lengths and uh, head sizes, and that's for holding all your escutcheons on, and uh, and you know rear view mirror, etc. So uh, they are good, good to get hold of now. More nuts. Uh, now these nuts uh, were for holding on uh, the jack lifters on my previous car. So nice domed nuts. Couple of bits that you get off the engine that you don't need. A um, couple of bits for fuel pumps, fuel filter, uh, for getting up, uh, running your fuel line all the way from the fuel tank, obviously, to the engine. So um, these are just uh, they just screw into the fuel pump, and uh, they got the barbs on there for uh, easy pushing on the fuel lines. That's handy to get. I've got a few cutouts here. This is for underneath the dash, uh, where your windscreen wipers go in to keep the angle. So you put push through uh, the windscreen wiper motor, and uh, this is underneath, and it helps keep the angle of the windscreen wiper. So it's just a couple of bits of hose, which you will gather uh, from uh, the actual hose kit that you might get from AK. Uh, I don't know where you get your brake servo from, but a lot of the second-hand brake servos actually have this bit uh, broken off. So um, I just got a couple of spares. This is actually the wrong dimension for the brake servo hose, but uh, you can look up the correct one and get that uh, ready for your brake servo. Okay, what else have we got? All right, and then we get into some electrical fittings. So I've got some spare uh, fittings here for my fan that I like to use because uh, they come with a little tab that you can attach to the chassis and then you know the uh, the actual connection uh, it, uh, runs through here so that is dead handy but also um, I've got some more terminals there we go so this is what I use for every single uh, sort of light so that it's got a quick release all my side lights uh, I put one of these on the end and then the other end on the wiring loom just so I can uh, easily remove them uh, ready for paint and then plug everything back in once it's painted as you can see here uh, these are all the lights here uh, all with the all the clips and terminals on uh, ready to go straight back in all right let's finish this up here um, so I've got a rivnut tool uh, nondescript um, but short handles, so you can get into small, tighter spaces. Uh, got different sizes. Uh, Sykes Pickavent, highly recommended um, for doing your flares, your pipe flares, uh, straightening, uh, deburring, etc. Uh, really good. Uh, the only drawback is uh, the width of this unit um, that you're putting the flare on the end of means you can't be. Uh, it needs to be a straight bit of pipe, at least this long, before your flare. Um, so, uh, so that can be limiting, or, or, or obviously you do your flare and then you bend your pipe. Uh, so just bear that in mind if you get something like that. It is quite a large unit. And so I've got a real cheapie from uh, eBay, and this uh, can do some flares, and it's only, um, what, 15 mil thick and uh, you can do one if you've forgotten one just after a bend. Uh, so that's dead hand, it just gets me out of trouble. Not quite so good, sometimes the pipes slip, uh, doesn't seem to grip quite so well, so you really have to clamp it down, uh, don't damage it. Uh, whereas this uh, really, really does uh, hold them tight. And literally, um, apart from that, get yourself some drill bits, uh, and I've got some cobalt uh, coated drill bits, which are excellent for the repeated drilling of holes into the chassis or maybe into uh, the stainless steel, which, uh, you know, really takes takes some doing. Uh, and that is it. Right, so I hope you found some of that useful. I just wanted to get over to you uh, how you can achieve a really great result with just a few good tools and uh, some resources. You know, it's such a shame that you're possibly making some headway, putting the hubs onto the chassis 
and you have to stop everything to go and get a pot of grease or order that one tool that you thought you could do without. So uh, hopefully it's given you some insight. Uh, future video will have the whole list of uh, eBay order and uh, everything else I've ordered. Uh, so you can go through a bit of a price breakdown. Um, but uh, that's it for now. Please join me for the next video. I've got some exciting news on the hard top fitting on the car and uh, it's currently at the paint shop and I've got some information about it uh, there as well. So I'll see you again.